Today's video is brought to you by Bespoke Post, a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. Before I got the new Fontanini anvil, I had a, another block set next to the old anvil that held this big socket for three inch shank tools. And mostly what I used in there were these jigs that were meant for drifting an ax. And this was really handy to have, other than the fact that it was kind of inconvenient for it to be right next to the anvil and was in the way sometimes. But I've missed being able to use these tools. In addition to that, I got this great big block with a one inch hole and a one and a quarter inch hole for either making hardy tools or as just a supplemental place to put hardy tools if you don't want them on the anvil but you still need to have them set up to use. And I have two small swedge blocks that I usually use just sitting on top of this swedge block. And of course when you do that they kind of move around. You got to reposition them from time to time. They work just fine that way. But I thought it would be really nice to have some sort of a setup that will hold all of these tools. So another swedge block stand that can sit right next to this one, ideally at the exact same height. All of these things are set flat in it. The two swedge blocks could then be taken out, turned up on edge so you could use whichever profile around the edge you needed, just like I do with the big swedge block. And I think that would be a lot handier, a lot more convenient. Things would be more solid and more efficient. So today, I need to make a stand. I don't have exactly the material I would like to make this stand, but I have so much stuff sitting on the rack out here that isn't being used for anything else. I think I'm going to see if I've got stuff that I can make work well enough for this, as long as the stand is substantial and solid. Looks like some 3 8 by 3 to make the frame. Big piece of channel iron for the legs. Since I know I want this stand to be the same height as my existing stand, it's safe for me to go ahead and cut the legs the same length. But as far as the frame goes and what the size is, I need to make sure that this is all arranged the way I want it and kind of mock up the top of it a little bit here. And that's not too hard to do. I can just go ahead and set these on a workbench and lay them out the way I think they're going to be the most useful. And hopefully I'll be right in the long run because this isn't going to be something you can reconfigure very easily. This then gives me something that I can measure to figure out exactly what size I want the frame. I'm going to put a couple of set screws in this when I'm all done. So I took the time to put a little extra block of steel in there that'll make it a little thicker, give more room for the threads to bite. Then I drilled it and tapped it, and now I've got a place I can put a couple of set screws, and I'll show you exactly what those are for when we get to that point. To get everything set up here, I'm going to put this up on some spacers, and that way my swedge blocks are going to be the same height above this stand as they are the other stand, and that way they'll kind of match. And it's kind of nice to be able to work around the edges sometimes without having to worry about hitting the stand, especially on the one that's got the shovel form in it because that is down below and you've got to be able to work out the edge so it has to sit above the rim of the stand. And of course I'm working with everything upside down so that it's all flush on the table and it's the backs that I got to deal with and try and figure out how to space that, how to support all this stuff. That big socket that I use for the axe drifting is the only thing that I'm going to weld solidly to this. Everything else is going to be able to come back out again if it needs to. The swedge blocks need to be able to stand up on edge and turn and rotate however you need it. They've got six different surfaces to work on, so you can't bolt them in or weld them in. And this other block, I think I'd like to have removable as well. So at this point, it really is just a matter of me messing around with different pieces of angle iron and channel iron and bar stock, trying to put rails in that will support everything at different heights and different levels, still allow the swedge blocks to turn on edge and slip back into the stand. Lots of things I have to do to this before I'm ready to put the legs on. I'm not going to go through exactly how I'm doing this because if you're doing a similar project, your assortment of swedge blocks and whatever else you want to put in here are almost certainly going to be different than mine, so it doesn't do me any good to tell you exactly what I'm doing. But once I get it all figured out, I'll give you a nice close-up shot of the back, and you can see what a contorted mess I end up with here. 
but hopefully it looks good from the front. And more importantly, as long as it's solid and keeps the swedge blocks in place, it's doing its job. I'd like to take a moment and thank Bespoke Post for sponsoring today's video. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering top shelf goods from under the radar brands, and it's free to join. Each box has around a $70 value, but you only pay a fraction of the price. You only pay for what you want. You'll get a box assigned to you each month based on a quiz you take when signing up. And before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what comes inside to decide if you like it. Keep it, swap it for a different box offer, or skip the month entirely for absolutely no charge. So why don't we take a look and see what they sent me to try out here. The first box goes under the name of Split, and it has a bare bones hatchet for splitting kindling wood, although this looks like it'd be a great little throwing tomahawk as well. Very nicely balanced, looks nicely made. I think that's gonna be a handy tool. I may use that for splitting kindling right here in the shop. 90% of the boxes from Bespoke Post come from small businesses, many of whom are located right here in the U.S. Split must be the right name. They also send a box entitled WET, not W-E-T, W-H-E-T. This is a set of Arkansas stones. It has a nice little non-slip pad so it stays put. Be just the thing for sharpening your knives. I think I'm gonna keep these in the shop. And they came with a nice little wooden box to keep them in. If you're like most blacksmiths, you probably like beer, and I've always been tempted to try to make my own, but really didn't know where to start. So a beer making kit is gonna be a lot of fun. I would love to show you this in use, but just a quick look at the instructions says it's gonna take a few weeks to actually make the beer, and this is gonna have to be cleaned up. Not something I'm gonna do in the blacksmith shop. But this comes with everything you need to brew a small batch of beer. I'll have to supply my own bottles, but yeah, luckily, I think I've got some used beer bottles around. It even comes with fresh bottle caps and a bottle capper. To get 20% off your first box, click the link in the video description and use the coupon code FORGE20 at checkout. Now let's get back to our project. Now I promised you this thing was gonna be ugly. Perhaps I've underestimated myself. It's really ugly. That or maybe it's art, I don't know. But it's gonna do the job. This is all of the little support structures that need to hold all the things at various levels and allow for the swedge blocks to stand on whichever edge they need to stand on. And this is upside down. Looks better from the top. But before I can try this out and see what I've actually ended up with here, I'm gonna to have to put the legs on it. And because I'm using channel iron for the legs, I'm gonna do this a little different than that old stand and make some adjustments. Gonna to have to notch it out a few places to go around some of the supports that I've already put in here. So there's gonna be some more fiddling and fussing around with the legs. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that done and show you what it looks like in the end and how all the swedge blocks fit. This is not a how-to video on making this stand. I'm making it up as I go along. And if you're thinking about making a similar stand, you're gonna to have to make that up on your own. Hopefully you're a little better engineer than I am and you can come up with some better ideas. Now somebody always asks, why do I run a generator when I need to weld? Hold on a second. Well, that's just because the generator is my welder. They're one and the same. This is a Lincoln Ranger 250. It's an engine-driven welder. It's the kind of thing that you usually mount on a truck. And I own this because at one point, I didn't have any power in my old shop. In fact, when this shop was first built, it didn't have any power, that came later. So this was the only way I could get enough power to weld. Also produced enough power to run other power tools if I needed to. Although back in those days, the forge blower, the little giant power hammer, the belt grinder, all ran off an extension cord from the house. You just had to plug in the tool you actually wanted. Really inconvenient. Now I'll try not to drop this on my toe. Well, that was simple enough.
This block is then held in with the set screw that we talked about earlier, and there's another one on this end. I'll have to move it out for that. Well, hopefully that gives you the general idea. It looks like I need to do just a little grinding to make things fit everywhere. The swedge blocks are not cast perfectly, so they are exactly the same dimension, no matter which way you turn them. So one of them needs a little bit of a high spot taken off here or there. And there's a high spot here and there in the frame. But those are all relatively minor. And then everything should fit just fine and be easier to get in and out. But I'm happy that these came out pretty much level and pretty much good and solid. Although the brick floor is not perfectly flat, so it's never going to be 100% stable without putting a shim, depending on where it is on the brick floor you put it. In use, I will probably leave these kind of end to end like this or side to side, something like that. That'll give me a little larger surface to set things on, put a piece of sheet metal on for full size layout for smaller projects, and it won't be a half bad little work table if I'm not using the swedge blocks. This one has this big space in here. And I think what I'm gonna do with that is make some tapered sockets. And that way I'll have some place to put my assortment of tinsmith stakes. I don't have very many of these, but they do come in handy from time to time. But they don't really fit anything that I have. That one falls all the way through that hole. And, so, and usually I just end up locking these things in the vise. But with some tapered sockets, they'll be good and solid. And I'm not using that space for anything else, so I just have to figure out how I'm going to do that. Anyways, I do hope you enjoyed this video, even if there was no actual forging. Just a pretty rough fabrication effort. I'll look forward to seeing you for next week's video. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, and remember to wear your safety glasses.